Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PhotoBiz Live. This is Joanne from the PhotoBiz team, and today we're being joined by Paul for a webinar about the power of subsites. Any successful business can utilize subsites to help brand their different areas of expertise. And in this webinar today, we're going to not only learn what subsites are, but also learn some effective ways to utilize them from a business and a photography perspective. In addition to getting the opportunity to learn from Paul in today's webinar, we'll also have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You can submit your questions using the chat tool and they'll be answered after the presentation. You can also join in the discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag pound sign PhotoBiz Live. If at any point during today's webinar you have difficulty hearing the speaker or seeing the slides, please use the comment box to let us know. We'll also be recording this webinar and it'll be available for replay on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash photobiz. With that being said, I'll turn things over to Paul. Thank you so much, Joanne. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul. I'm with the very passionate support team here at PhotoBiz, and I have the pleasure of discussing uh, subsites with everyone today. Um, subsites uh, can actually be very beneficial for your online web presence. Um, and what we'll be covering today are the definition of what subsites are, the reasons why subsites are a great idea, and also show some live examples of other photo biz, uh, photo bizers out there using subsites. So why don't we go ahead and, and just jump right on in and, and take a look at everything. Okay, what is a subsite? A subsite is actually a separate website within your account. The domain name is a subroot of your primary domain name. So basically, if you had your main domain is, say, yourdomain.com, a subdomain would be something like weddings.yourname.com or weddings.yourdomain.com. A subsite is a, a whole website in itself, and it has its own control panel all within your one PhotoBiz account that you have. Um, it has the ability to create unique content that is different from your main website. And what you're seeing here is actually a screenshot of uh, what would look like your control panel if you were logged into your HTML5 control panel. Now, at the top, in where the blue bar is, you'll see a part that says current site. If you have a subsite, you can drop that down, not only see your main domain name, but your other um, subdomains as well within there. Again, the, the subdomain website address um, is a subdomain of your main domain name. So an example, again, your main website is yourdomain.com, subsite is weddings.yourdomain.com. Now, why are subsites a good idea? A couple of reasons. Um, a few of them are they are a great way to organize your work, a great way to target a specific audience, and you can create a, a more clear focus for search engines uh, when building metadata. And we're going to look over all these here in, in a little while. Now, one of the easier way um, to organize your work for your viewers is by using a splash intro page and typically in support we have uh, you know we have quite an amount of, of folks calling in asking if um, you know a splash intro or a landing page can actually be created in PhotoBiz and is there an extra charge for us is is hard to build and um, you absolutely have the ability to build a splash intro page directly in your PhotoBiz control panel, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little while. A splash intro page is also where you can advise your customers to find out different aspects of your company's online web presence, or your online presence. Here's actually an example of what a splash intro page is from Blair Phillips Photography. Now you'll see that Blair has five different sites, all uh, under his online web presence for Blair Phillips Photography, he has a senior site, a wedding site, newborns, families, and also a, a workshop site. Now this is what you would see when you go to BlairPhillipsPhotography.com and each one of these images here that you see can be clicked on to go to its own individual site specifically about that targeted information for that site. So if you click on seniors, you're going to see a seniors website, same thing with weddings, newborns, families, and workshops. Now what we'll do is we're going to go jump on in. I'm going to show you some uh, live demonstrations on how to add a subsite to your PhotoBiz account, how to build your subsite, 
how to put together your splash intro page, and also live examples of PhotoBrizzer subsites. So bear with me one moment and we'll get that started. All right, everyone. This should look pretty familiar to everybody. This is my, um, my control panel for my PhotoBiz account. And as you'll, you'll see under here, there are all different products that I have under here. Now, regarding subsites, I'm specifically referring to your Flash HTML and HTML5 um, sites where you can actually uh, get subsites for. So, for instance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on HTML5. So, if I log into my HTML5 control panel, again, this should be familiar to everyone that, that has this product, I can log in here and build my own website. Now, if I didn't have subsites and I was focusing mainly on one website but for all of my different um, parts of my photography, say I'm a wedding, seniors, and family photographer, I would be placing everything into this one site. And as you can see here, I have all of my information here. I have my different galleries for all of my different parts of photography that I, that I do. Okay, now this is perfectly fine. Um, you can certainly do this. However, what what the subsites do for you is it lets you speak specifically about a targeted area of your business for every site. So, for instance, instead of me having wedding seniors and family all on one specific site, I'd be able to break it down for everybody. Okay, well let's let's take a take a look on on what I what I'm referring to. In my extras, I'm able to go in my control panel to my extras, and I can actually purchase a subsite, okay, or an additional HTML5 portfolio site. Now, regularly, they are one-time setup fee of $185, but after six months of being um, with PhotoBiz, then your loyalty discount starts kicking in. Now, your loyalty discount, uh, you know, it can be different one person to another. Um, on my specific account, it would have been $129.50. Nice discount from $185. So here I'd actually be able to click on the box, put in my credit card information, submit it, and then immediately have access to my new subsite. Now if I did go ahead and get, say, one or two extra sites, I would be able to come up here where it says current site, drop down my box and be able to toggle between my main site and then my two other subsites that I have created for myself. All right. So again, this is my main website. This is how I wanted to demonstrate if you had all of your content on one site without subsites. Again, I have three different galleries here and I'd have to provide information about all these different areas of my business all on one website. And again, there's not, there's not a problem with that at all. However, to, to organize your work better and to uh, focus directly on one specific part, I like to use uh, subsites. All right. So maybe, um, maybe instead of just having everything on this one site, I'll go ahead and make this main website uh, maybe my family photography. So what I can do is delete my two galleries, put specific information only about my families, and then have my blog up there on a contact page. Okay, and that's all I would probably want for me personally, maybe a testimonials page. And as you can see here, I've done that also for my weddings. My weddings, I'm actually able to come in here, put just one wedding gallery up, have my home page, and some other information. But also, if you think about it, this is a great way for me to design my website specifically for, um, the, you know, the couples out there that are, that are going to get married and really looking for a, a wedding photographer. So I can go into my templates and decide which template I think would be best for weddings. I'm a really big fan of the Milan template for, for a wedding photography site, so I selected that. And I was able to easily create my site to target those couples out there looking for a, a wedding photographer. Okay. Now, a really, really important part that I, I wanted to, to focus on today was how subsites can help you with your search engine optimization. I want to go back into my, my site that I have everything, all of my different areas of my business on, on my one site here. And if we take a look at the SEO information under the metas area, we'll see here that I, I really have everything all under my, my meta information for, for the search engines here. 
So if I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina, I might I might structure my SEO metadata um, as Greensboro wedding portrait and senior photographer. Um, now that's a lot of different parts of my business that I'm trying to get the search engines to really index all at the same time. So it may not be as easy for them, the, the search engines I'm referring to, to be able to um, get a, a really, really clear idea on what you're trying to be indexed as uh, within the search engines. But again, I have Greensboro Wedding Portrait and Senior Photographer title, same thing in um, my description area, and then my keywords are about all those different areas as well. However, if I go to a specific sub-site, let's go back to my weddings, now I can go into my meta information, and because this site is only for weddings, I can structure my meta information specifically about my wedding photography. So here I can place in Greensboro Wedding Photographer and really focus all about that. Now this gives search engines the ability to crawl and index my site with a much more clear idea of what I'm trying to go for. Okay. And of course, I do want to point out that if you have any questions, concerns about SEO, search engine optimization at all, uh, please give us a call. We have some great information for you. Um, we'll be happy to provide you with a, a free SEO consultation um, and really take the time to look over your site to really help you out. And of course, if you're, you're looking for um, uh, more of an individualized service for you and to really, really, really crack down and learn search engine optimization, we do offer uh, an SEO service, and you'll see that under services on your homepage of your, of your PhotoBiz account. Now again, here with weddings, I was able to create a whole site specifically about weddings. I'm going to talk about what to, um, what to do on the wedding day to prepare for the day as, as far as photography goes. Um, I'm going to speak about myself and, and how long I've been in the business and how much I just love wedding photography and really trying to attract the bride or the, you know, the couple to contact me and inquire about my wedding services. Bear with me one moment while I get the next part up for us. Thank you, everyone. Now, what I'd like to do is really show you um, how to put together a splash intro page to be able to direct your, your website viewers to the different areas of your business. So as you'll see here on your control panel, what I'll do is go under my weddings. Here in my control panel, you will see a splash intro icon. If I click on it, it will give me the tools to be able to create a splash intro page, again, which is a landing page that your, your viewers can select different areas of your web presence from, and build it right here. Now, it may look um, a little foreign to you when you come to it, and of course, you can call support uh, regarding splash intro pages and how to build them. But basically, a splash intro page is going to be one single page where you can add intro links to be able to guide people into different directions when they go to your website. So for instance, if I click on intro link, I'll be able to create a link here, decide whether I'm going to choose from my HTML5 sites which site I want that specific link to go to. So for instance, I can choose my main domain, my weddings, or my senior site. I can link it to an external website address. Maybe I want to put up a link for my uh, blog. So I can put my blog URL here and put a link for my blog. You are able to open up in a new window, the same window or light box. I typically like opening in a new window. This gives the, the person the ability to easily come back to the landing page after they exit out of the site that they're looking at after they choose it. You can also use one of our stock backgrounds if you wanted to. You can upload your own background to it. Recommended dimensions would be 3,000 pixels wide by 1,730 pixels high. Or you can just use no background at all and simply, under the details section, choose a specific solid color for the background. Now also, on a splash intro page, you can put footer text. This text um, is, is a great way to kind of greet people into the, you know, when they land on that first page of your website, greet them to your online web presence. Um, if used correctly, it can also be a benefit with search engine optimization by, while, while building that text and speaking in, in sentence form, you can also use um, rich keyword content in there 
um, to help benefit you with your, your search engine optimization. Splash Intro page also has an SEO area where you can put a title, description, and keywords for the meta information. And you can also upload uh, your own logo. Now I've already put together a Splash Intro page uh, a little bit on my main site, um, which I will go ahead and take a look at right now. I have three links here. They look um, like nothing's there, but I'm going to show you how, how it is working. As you can see here now, I can move my, my logo um, to the center or right, but right now it's on the left-hand side. But I have three links that I have uploaded individually. These images um, were built in Photoshop, and I linked my family, my weddings, and my seniors here. Now, I did, ref I did talk about um, footer text earlier, and the footer text would be placed directly under, under these links here. But now my customer would be able to come in here and select exactly what they're they're looking for. So, for instance, if a, if a you know someone that is getting married is looking for a wedding photographer, they may not really be interested in seeing about families or seniors. So, if they go to a site where they have everything all under one site, it may or may not, but but it it could. Um, have them search for a photographer where, where the site is really focused on weddings. So this would be a great idea to set up a, a sub-site and a splash intro page, and they'll be able to click right on the wedding site and go directly to the wedding site that I've created. Okay, and I've used kind of, a, kind of a, an elegant-like background here because I'm, this is for my wedding site. Um, and, and again, I have all my information about my wedding photography here. They're not going to see anything else but my wedding information here. So that was a splash intro page. We talked a little bit about why it may be a good idea to get a, a sub-sites to add on to, to really be able to give the ability to your viewer to have a clear focus of, of the work that you do. Now what I'd like to do is take, um, take about 10 minutes or so and really view other photo visitors out there and their sites and how they've set theirs up. I have three different sites that I want to show everybody today that I absolutely love and want to see how they, they've created everything. Bear with me one moment. I'll get that all set up. All right. Thank you, everybody, for bearing with me. The first site I'd like to take a look at is Blair Phillips Photography. And we saw this in a screenshot earlier. This is Blair's actual site, and he's broken his down into five different sections. Um, now, Blair is an awesome photographer out there, and um, he really wanted to provide uh, his viewers for a way to be able to get to his first page of his site and choose wherever they want to go. All right. Blair has some amazing senior photography. If I click on seniors here, it's going to take me to a site where he has specifically designed for his seniors. All right. So you're not going to come here and see information about... Um, you know, his wedding photography or if he does families or his workshops, it's all going to be about seniors. So a senior can come to the site and see everything about them. Um, and that's really what people want to see. They want to see the information that relates specifically to them. They're not looking for anything else. Um, so they can come into Blair's site, take a look at his information that he has specifically about seniors. He has his galleries here. That's uh, one specifically for girls and one specifically for guys, so they can really see how um, how he does his senior photography. Okay, and of course he has his information here about his social media. He has his store and of course his contact page, which of course we want everybody to be able to come to his contact page and inquire about his his photography services. And this is really the same thing for. Uh, for everything else. He has his weddings, newborns, families, workshops still. So I can come into weddings, say I'm a beautiful bride, and I come in to look at, at wedding photography. I want to see everything about me. Again, um, I'm the bride. I'm the one that's looking for um, for a wedding photographer. I don't want to see anything about seniors or uh, anything else. I want to see ex his exact work about his wedding photography. Um, and I know I sound like a bride, so um, everybody bear with me. I'm trying to use my, my pretty voice right now. And um, I, I'm in his site, and I'm able to see everything, his information that he has about himself, of course, the reasons why you should pick him, and, of course, his wedding gallery images. Again, this is BlairPhillipsPhotography.com. He has some awesome stuff here. 
I won't go through his other links, but I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of them um, just so you can kind of get a, get a good idea on the way that he set it up um, and, and why he's using subsites. Next one I wanted to take a look at is Larry Perez. Now, he's, he's not doing um, seniors, or, and, and you know, um, he, he's actually focusing specifically on fine art weddings, uh, his conceptual artwork, and, of course, his online courses that he, he provides. So let's take a look here. Now you will see his splash intro page. These images that he uploaded here, he actually designed himself and uploaded as a whole image, including the fine art weddings um, title up here. And then he used the control panel for the splash intro page for, for the wedding photography wording down here. He uploaded his own custom logo. And he used that footer text area to put in his phone number and, and his location that he's at. So again, um, for his weddings, if you click on that, you have a site specifically catered towards his wedding photography. Now here with his wedding photography, he does you know, provide similar information as the one we saw before. He has his wedding gallery, he has his information. But again, it's all about his wedding photography. Um, he's actually done something really neat here where um, the opening page has, has um, a, a little contest that he's running right now. So you can look at rates and specials and take a look at exactly what he's, he's um, doing as far as the contest to, to win something on the site. Larry Perez also does uh, conceptual artwork, where if you go to it, it does show all of his fine art images. Really cool stuff here. But again, things like his, his artwork, he didn't necessarily want to be included into his wedding photography site. Again, because somebody that's looking for a wedding photographer doesn't necessarily, they're not really interested in seeing everything about his, his fine art that he does. So he separated the two, and now you can come and look through all this awesome work here that he has, specifically about his conceptual art. And really what this did for him, he was able to come in here, go into his control panel, in his PhotoBiz website and completely set up a site specifically for his conceptual art that is um, that he felt was best for this type of work. So he picked a, a template that he thought would show off his, his conceptual artwork the best. Um, he picked the transitions. You see how it transitions from one image to the next. Specifically with, with in the back of his mind that this is all going to be for my conceptual artwork. And I think he's done an amazing job with this stuff. And of course, he also has his um, online courses that um, he'd be able to link over to either maybe it's um, a PhotoBiz store he's using or even a third party um, website that he uses for his online courses. But he'd be able to um, point somebody in that direction as well. Again, I do want to point out that it doesn't have to be a PhotoBiz website that you can link through through your Splash Intro page. Uh, it can be um, any website that has a URL. I mean, it can even be a PDF that you have with the URL on it. All right. So, uh, last one I want to look at is Visio Photography. Now, Visio uh, again, and you'll see the the Splash Intro links that I had uploaded earlier from from my example. It's kind of similar to this. What they've done is they've created the three links in, say, Photoshop, uploaded each one, life, love, and art, all as separate links that they're pointing to in their PhotoBiz control panel. And same idea. If you click on Life, which is the portrait site, you're going to see a portraits website. Now, what I really really like about the way that they've done this. If you take a look at their portraits, and then we go to their love, okay, and then go to their art, you'll, you might be able to notice that they've actually used the same exact template for all three of the sites. Now, they're completely separate sites, but it has that same brand, that same look on each one of the subsites. So what they've done is they actually take they've taken the I believe they're using the Milan template if I'm if I'm correct by that. And they had for their portrait site they've created a custom background. They use a different color scheme. Um, they have their logo uploaded here, but you'll notice there's some similar characteristics as if I went to uh, their art site. Again the Milan template. I have a different logo here. Um, 
different information there. Uh, but again, what they're doing is they're actually able to provide a really, really clear direction for their website viewer to be able to go as soon as they hit the site. And here's also a great example of the footer text that I was referring to. Um, they have information about who they are, what they do, um, and where they do it. And even though you're seeing this in, in a very clear sentence form, you do have the key words in here such as destination wedding photography, uh, boutique portrait photography, a studio, and also their location. So it's, it's very possible that if you looked for a, um, you know, a destination wedding photography maybe in Asheville, North Carolina, which are some beautiful mountains over there, that you would see uh, Vizio photography come up and be able to take a look at um, their wedding work. And here, of course, you can see the information um, if, if you're on the wedding site specifically about, about their weddings. Nothing more, um, not about their art or anything else. So the bride's going to be able to come in, take a look, and go directly to their wedding's website, find exactly what they need or what they were looking for, be able to connect with them right from this site. So let me go ahead and go over one more time with you exactly what we talked about and, and how to kind of ever get everything together here. Bear with me one moment here. Okay, so we really focused on HTML5. If you have a Flash and HTML site, you'll see the control panel is very similar. Again, you can go to Extras in your Flash HTML site and be able to get the additional Flash Plus portfolio site. What this will do for you is it will provide you a Flash and HTML version of your website. And if you do add that um, for the one-time setup fee, you'd be able to come up over here and you would actually see the subsite under here. Now, I don't have it set up on mine under my Flash HTML, only my HTML5, but I did definitely want to point out the fact that you can do that in your Flash HTML site as well. Okay. And again, for your Flash HTML area, you're able to go ahead and uh, create a Splash intro page. Um, and also set up your metadata, and I would be able to set up the meta and when I say metadata, I mean the search engine optimization area for um, each one of my subsites here. I also have a blog as well. Some folks really like to put their blog on their Splash Intro page, so if I wanted to do that, I can come into my Splash Intro area, click on Intro Links, create a link, name it, and uh, and and use it as an external website address to point directly over to the blog. Um, all in all, I really, really wanted to get the point across that um, subsites can be very beneficial, um, really let you focus or build a site that's specifically focused towards one area of your business instead of all different areas. I just think it, uh, it's much more direct, um, more organized and easier for your website viewers to be able to um, get that great experience and also um, uh, be potentially better for search engine optimization with giving them a clear focus as well whenever they're crawling and indexing your website. Um, I really hope that everyone um, found this information beneficial. If you have any questions or concerns at all about it, please don't hesitate to call us at support. We'll be more than happy to assist. Uh, we really look forward to speaking with everyone about this. I'm going to hand it back over to Joanne. Thank you everyone for attending today. Take care. Thank you, Paul, for the great presentation. Um, now we're going to go ahead and answer some questions from the audience. So if you have a question, please go ahead and submit it using the uh, comment box in the webinar software. You can also submit your questions via Twitter by using the hashtag pound sign PhotobizLive. Okay, and we do have a question from Lois, and Lois asks, um, do all of the subsites have the same background? Well, thank you, Lois. Um, Subsites can have the same background if you choose to apply that same background to each one of the um, the subsites directly. If you saw from the examples earlier, um, you'd probably see that, for instance, Visio Photography had a different background for each one of their websites. So maybe a wedding subsite would be much more elegant. Maybe a seniors site would be a little bit more edgier and something more appealing to teens out there. Um, but great question. And of course, if you have any other questions about it, give us a call. We'll be happy to assist. 
Well, it looks like that's going to just about wrap it up for this week's edition of PhotoBiz Live Presents. Um, thank you for the questions, and thank you very much, Paul, for taking the time to talk with us today about subsites. Um, a, a recording of today's webinar will be posted on the PhotoBiz YouTube channel at youtube.com slash photobiz. Also, be sure to check out our blog and watch your email for updates about future webinars. Our next webinar will be Baby's First Year with Lori Nordstrom, and that will be on Tuesday, July 30th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks again, Paul, and that concludes this episode of PhotoBiz Live. Have a great day, everyone.